welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these really pretty Christmas ornaments using some tiles from Lowe's. Stay tuned and I will show you how to make them. All right, y'all, let us get started. So first off, what you are going to need, a package of these arabesque tiles from Lowe's. Um, I'm reasonably certain that many other home improvement stores aside from Lowe's would carry this style, but let's take a look-see right here. This is what they look like, and I'm going to flip it over so that you can see the label on the back. This is what they are called. Hudson Brilliant White Lantern Glossy Porcelain Mosaics. Well, that's just a long name. <laughs> Here's the model number and everything else in case you want to get on the Lowe's website. You can put that information in and see if they have it in your area. But anyway, we are going to be decorating these, and I'm going to be using my Cricut. Well, I've already used my Cricut. I've already got the design cut out. And if you'll look in the description box, I'll also put it down in the comments. I'll have a link to the Etsy shop where I downloaded the cut file for the design that I'm going to use. Now, if you do not want to use a Cricut, or if you do not have one, you know, you, you can look around on Etsy, and you can find people that actually have these things already cut, and you can buy them. You know, just get on there and look, um, arabesque tile vinyl cutout, and you'll be able to find it that way. Or if you want an alternative to this, you can use stickers, um, Sharpie markers, paint markers, um anything like that and if you'll also look again in the description box i'll put a link to my friend julie from julie's wreath boutique she made ornaments using these and she didn't use her cricket so you know that's another option if you want to head on over there and check her out she will show you a different way to do it now if you look at the back of the tiles we all know how tiles come they come with this um, netting glued to the back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife here, my X-Acto pen rather, and I'm going to just leave them on the cardboard so that I don't cut through and slice up my table. Like so. And just cut it apart like that. All right, I will do one more. Let's go this way. So this lovely ring and bracelet set that I'm wearing. This is paparazzi jewelry. I'm sure that y'all have heard of paparazzi. Um, each piece of jewelry is only $5. Tons of pretty designs. And whereas I do not sell it, um, there is a long-term friend of mine um, that does sell it. So I will put her link down below. If you like paparazzi, you like it. If you don't like it, it's okay. But I do ask that you keep your comments about such companies to yourself. She is an older lady, and this is how she supplements her income, okay? So let us be nice. So anyway, let's take a look here, and I think there's a little bit of excess there. You can trim that off with scissors. Which I'm probably just like that. I'm not going to do all of it right now. We'll do that later on. But anyway, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to get our vinyl. All right, so I have all of my designs that I have cut out of my vinyl. And this is the type of vinyl that I use. This is Cricut brand vinyl, and I am a Cricut affiliate. <laughs> Once again, in the description box, I'll have a link where you can go and get all this cool uh, vinyl and things. But anyway, this is the holographic threads. As you can see, my designs are cut. So this is what it looks like after you cut them all out and you have weeded it and everything. Isn't that pretty? Now, um, like I said before, you can look on Etsy and find people that sell these pre-cut. I do not sell these at the moment. Number one, this one right here is not my design. But, you know, I went ahead and bought this design cut file because I like to support small business. And two, I didn't feel like sitting here and, you know, messing with the computer and design space and trying to design my own. But this is what it looks like, and I'm also out of transfer tape. But there are lots of alternatives that you can use to transfer tape. You can use that. You can use um, Glad Press and Seal. Now, the Press and Seal can be a little bit tricky. You can use painter's tape, scotch tape, clear contact paper. I've used all of those things. But for this, <laughs> I have used the Glad Press and Seal. Now, this has already been cleaned with rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to see, and this is probably a little bit difficult. I need to be looking directly down on top of it, though, and I'm not. So I'm trying to, okay, I think that's going to work. 
just slowly, slowly get this pressed into place. Get the vinyl to stick to my, my towel here. I want to say to my ornament. It's not an ornament yet. It's a towel. We're turning it into an ornament. A little burnishing tool is over there somewhere. <laughs> I don't use half the tools that are designated for Cricut machines. All right, so let's take off the press and seal. Hey, it's even the holiday print press and seal. So, ah! Stick, darn ya. You just have to ease it off of here. Especially with thin letters like this. You just have to be careful. You need to stick. I might have to work with that piece there. <laughs> and then I'm just going to press it down. And I'm just working my way around the ornament just to get the vinyl to stick. But anyway, I'm gonna work on this for a few minutes because I like to go slowly because if you've ever used the holographic vinyl before, you know, sometimes it can tear. So I'm just going to take my time and go slowly and I'll be back. Okay, well that took me a second. Um, I have my design pressed down onto my tile and how cute is that? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover the back. You don't have to. I mean, nobody's gonna see this. It's gonna be hanging on a tree. But I know somebody's gonna ask how to cover the back. So this is how I would do it. I had this card stuck here from Joann's, glittery and shiny. And I'm going to get my trusty Christmas pin and I'm just going to trace around it and then I'm gonna cut it out and then we're gonna Mod Podge it to the back. So let's give her a good tracing. And then we'll cut it out. Um, you can use felt, you could use cork, you know, a sheet of cork, whatever you want to use. But I am just using this. So like I said, I'm going to cut this out and then get some Mod Podge and we'll cover it. I'm upside down. All right, I have this traced out now. I tried to cut just slightly inside the line that I had traced so that it would be exactly the same size as the ornament. And even if it is not, okay, if you see that it is not going to be exactly the same size and you may can see some of it from the front, you can just wait till it dries and then go back in with your X-Acto knife and trim around it. No problem. All right, so let's get our, let's spill it. Let's get our Mod Podge. Now, this netting back here, you know, you can try to take that off if you want to, but it's on there. If you've ever put down tile, you know that it's on there. Um, I'm not even going to mess with it, okay? I'm just going to leave it on. We're covering it up. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put a nice, nice coat on here. Trying to not get it on the edges. There we go. Can y'all see this? <laughs> I was, I'm just sitting here minding my own business. I didn't even look up to see if y'all could see what I'm doing. All right, well, let's get that over there. So now we're just gonna take this and lay it down and just cover up the back, voila. And now that is covered. So now what I'm gonna do, let's get this really pressed down and then I'm gonna flip it over so that the weight of the ornament can hold it down so that it can dry, okay? this card stock was curled when I got it and it's still wanting to curl up. So I'm just going to flip it over like that and let it dry and then we will come back and finish this baby off. Okay, I have an army of these guys going. But anyway, what we're gonna be using to hang these or to put on the back so they can be hung, the bell mounts, you can get these at any craft store pretty much. It sells jewelry making supplies, Walmart has them. Um, I was just in Joann's and I had coupons, you know, and there were sales, which is why I used this brand. But what it is, if you make jewelry, you know what I'm talking about. You can use e uh, epoxy, <laughs> epoxy, and then you put this part on the back of your piece, and then you put your chain right through there. But anyway, what we're going to be doing, and as you can see, one side is really, really textured, so that can really, you know, grip the adhesive. 
we're going to flip it over and I'm going to be using some of this Gorilla Clear Grip glue. This is like E6000. You use whatever kind that you have, but it does need to be like a heavy duty adhesive, not hot glue or something like that. Why is this not opening? Are you open? I don't think, oh Lord, there it comes. All right, it's open. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of glue here on the back of this and then glue it down. Probably should have waited and done that last. Because now i got to flip it over and show you what I was doing to the front of it. But um, it'll hold in place. So you just glue that right there. And you want the little hangy part, hollow, the little hangy part to be sort of like even with the top of your ornament here. Scooch that over just a little bit. All right, now let's be gentle and lay that down so that I don't move it around. I said I should have done that last, but I didn't. So now what we're going to do is I wanted to put a little extra something something on these. And as you can see right here, little tiny rhinestones right there just to give it a little bit more uh, dimension, glitz, whatever you want to say. That came from Joann's as well. These tiny little rhinestone stickers. They come on little sheets. Uh, they do not come with a hair attached. These tiny little sheets and use tweezers when you're putting these on. Just make it easy on yourself and use tweezers. I just kind of stick it to my nail and then stick it down on there. But yeah, scoot over. No, don't go there. Go where you belong. Just like so. And I really don't want to pick that up because the bail is stuck there. Also at Joann's, I got these tiny little, aren't these adorable, over near the ribbon and buttons and things like this. These little ribbon poinsettias poinsettas. <laughs> I say poinsettas. And I want to glue one just right there at the very, very top. And I think I'm going to use the Gorilla Glue for that too while I have it out. I'm going to put a blob right here on the back. Right there. Now I'm going to stick that there. And I want to get the petals to where I don't want it to cover up this little flourish right there. So that looks good. There we go. All right. That looks good to me. So now all that there's left to do is just do the rest of them. And I'm going to let them sit here and let the glue, epoxy rather, let that all set up and dry. And they will be done. Then you can find, you know, just use whatever you want to to hang them with. I have some of this. Actually, I have some red somewhere. And I have some really, really thin ribbon. I might run the ribbon through there. But anyway... I'm gonna let it sit there, and then I'll come back again at the end, very, very end of the video, and let you see them again once I have everything put together. So I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, check me out on other forms of social media, the links to all of which will be in the description box down below, and I hope to see y'all next time. Bye. Okay, y'all, here we are. This is what I decided to hang them with. I decided to use some thin red ribbon and I am totally happy with how they came out. So I hope that you like them as well. And thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time.